the internet. Today we're going to once again have a bit of a long-winded video. I'm going to try to keep it as short as I can as well as keep it as not, you know, not crazy technical. Uh, we're going to talk about boa genetics a little bit. Um, it can be very, uh, very in-depth, just like ball python genetics. Um, there's a lot going on with ball pythons, but there's also a lot going on with boas as well. And so without further ado, we're going to get underway, starting off with our boy Church here, who is cruising along here. We're going to see if we can get him back, because it's if we're showing off your genetics, you need to be in the shop, bud. Okay, so Church is a ghost boa. So he's a boa constrictor imperator, or, or common boa. That's where a lot of the morphs come from. Um, he is called Ghost because he is actually a, uh, he is an anantheristic, which means that a lot of the reds and browns are taken out of the pigmentation. It's a recessive trait. Um, so normally if you have just a regular anantheristic boa constrictor, they're more gray, they're much darker, and the regular browns aren't there. Um, there's actually two different uh, varieties of aneurtheristic in boa constrictors, and someone's probably going to correct me on that and tell me there's more, but I think they're just different lines, if I'm not mistaken. There's, And they just call them anery type 1 and anery type 2. Um, he is an anery type 1, which most of the time is what people refer to. Um, but he is also hypo, which is short for hypomelanistic, which hypomelanistic means a reduction in melanin. So generally that means a lighter snake with reduced banding. So the saddles is what we call those kind of markings on top of the bow constrictor get changed up a little bit. They're usually not as thick and it can cause aberration like this. So if you can kind of see, like they're a little, they're a little wonky. Um, with ghost boas, sometimes they have a tendency to get kind of yellow and other times they stay a little bit more pale. He's actually a pretty, pretty good one. Um, He's possibly a super ghost, which means he might be a super hypo, which if you remember from other uh, ball python things, that means that um, hypo is the incomplete dominant trait or the heterozygous form of the complete dominant uh, or super form called super hypo in boa constrictors. And ball python's hypo is actually a recessive trait, but um, so we don't know if he's a super or not. We think he is considering uh, how weird and wonky and reduced his pattern is, but we won't know until we breed him out and if every single baby pops out hypo, because that's how super forms work, uh, we'll know in fact if he is a super or not. He's also het for albino uh, call, so he has the ability to make what's called a moon glow boa constrictor if he gets paired with the right female. So what that means is that it's a triple gene animal being visually albino, visually anatheristic, as well as hypo, which makes an all white snake, although sometimes moon glows have a tendency to uh, kind of yellow as they get a little bit older because of the hypo. Next up, we have Sunshine, who's actually our most recent boa acquisition. Uh, we haven't gotten one for quite some time. We got her last summer, but she is a lipstick albino. And in previous videos, we've kind of talked about this a little bit. So. There are quite a few varieties of albino in boa constrictor. Um, some of the more common ones are the regular uh, T-negative albino that you can usually think of, which is the call line. There's also sharp and uh, caramels as well, but we can talk about those in, in just a second. Um, and in call, there are two distinct lines. Um, one is uh, coral, which is generally more pink and it has a lot of blushing and stuff. And the other one is lipstick which they call lipstick because of the really highly defined and clean pattern that you get on their saddles and on their head stamp over here. Um, a lot of people prefer the lipstick because of that. It makes really clean animals. Um, personally, I like the coral a little bit better just because I like the super, super high pink. Uh, that doesn't detract anything from that whatsoever. They are compatible but we probably won't ever cross anything with coral lines with the lipstick, just that way we can keep distinctive lines breeding for what we want, which is, you know, about polygenic traits, which means specific line type breeding, as well as uh, just like the individual, for the <laughs> um, so breeding for specific traits 
keeping the pinkest animals to the pinkest animals, the cleanest animals to the cleanest animals as far as pattern goes. And that's kind of what we want to go for, but we wanted to get Sunshine here because she was just a, a real, real cutie and I loved her pattern. Here we have, once again, our dear most photogenic boa, uh, Pi, who is the coral line of the Call Sun Glow. So we talked about the more cleaner lines and edges and stuff like that with the lipstick, but with coral, they're called coral because of the type of pink coloration in them. And as you can see, like along her sides, hopefully you can see it um, in the video, it's really pink and it comes all the way upper. And then over here, even on her head and upper neck, you can see that it's a lot more pink than the lipstick line. And so it's just kind of up to what you want to do, whether you want a super high blushed, very pink animal, or if you want really clean, really sharp uh, types of uh, animals that you want just for pattern's sake. And once again, you know, that is just the call. And so we're going to talk now a little bit, because this is about to get a little technical, and I'm, and I'm going to try not to misspeak. So earlier I mentioned that there's a lot of lines of albino, and I'm going to show you an example of one of those in just a second, in boa constrictors. And so there's a lot of distinctive ones that have to do with the protein tyrosinate, which is a gene that we talked about once again in other videos that has to do with melanin production, um, that if the gene is present, it's a limiter and adjuster. So if that gene is present, it will determine how much melanin is actually being produced in the animal. And so in an animal like a call albino, there is no tyrosinate present. So it's a tyrosinase negative gene animal. So there's going to be no melanin whatsoever. And so that's how you get the regular albino. But in boa constrictors, there are quite a few other distinct distinctive lines that do actually have tyrosinase present. And that is, uh, and every single one is very distinctive. They all have different amounts of tyrosinase in them. And most of them are incompatible with each other. And now I'm going to show you an example of one of those. Kilo is a VPI T positive. She's possibly jungle, but we don't think so. But there was a lot of jungle and striping in her parentage, which is what gives her those kind of crazy lines which makes us think that she might be a jungle her sister is a jungle but she's only partial but she's only a uh, het t positive so when we say t positive kind of like what we were talking about and she can be a little contender so hopefully she doesn't decide to take a chomp um that means that there is tyrosinase present in her so she is albino but because the tyrosinase gene in the protein is not in there so i'm trying to move her slowly so you guys can really see the difference so it's almost like a caramely color or a caramel color. And, you know, it almost just looks like a really light colored regular boa. But what that means is that there's albino that has tyrosinase in there and the tyrosinase in her genes is limiting it to where it is, there is a lot less reduction of melanin. So it's a more caramely color instead of like those deep dark browns and almost kind of black sometimes in the saddles that you would see normally. Um, they're called VPI because uh, the Barkers down in Texas who are called VPI, uh, they're the first ones to prove out this line of T-positive. There is another line of T-positive that were first really found in the Central American locality of the uh, Imperators, and that's called CAT-positive. And in that one, they are a lot darker which means that there is more tyrosinate present in there, so it's not limiting nearly as much as the regular VPIs. They aren't compatible. And we do have an animal that is a motley VPI, but she's a bit of a cantankerous butt, so we're not gonna bring her out because like I said, I don't ever wanna do anything that's going to have bites if I can help it. And she was not being very cooperative when we were pulling these guys to bring upstairs for this video. So I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit. This next part is gonna be a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna do my best not to misspeak. So, you know, we talked about the regular call albino and the VPI and the CA T positive albinos. There's another one that's been around for a very long time called Sharp, which is another line of what normally appears to be another T negative albino. 
Uh, those are known to be a little bit more uh, brighter than the call albinos. But uh, they're, they're also very popular. They've been in the hobby for quite some time. They're just as popular as the call. And you can definitely, uh, like a trained eye, can tell the difference between them most of the time. But uh, there is another kind of caramely colored snake called a Boa Jean Woman Caramel, which seems to be, you know, like a, like a caramel colored T-positive type snake. But there was something that happened back in the 2000s where a company called Basically Boas bred a BWC, we're just gonna abbreviate that, to a sharp animal, and they popped out this kind of, this entirely different looking snake. And they didn't know what was going on with that. And they, and on their site, if you go there and look up that, they have a bit of a background about the breeding. Um, but they were trying to figure out what that meant because, you know, here's this caramel snake mixed with the supposedly albino snake. They shouldn't be compatible. It's making this weird, different animal in general. And that was called the paradigm boa. Um, and what, essentially what they first thought was that, you know, here's this animal that we get this weird new one and we put it back to a normal they all came out normal. So that means that it was 50% had BWC and 50% had sharp. Um, and after talking to a lot of different people and um, I did a little bit of research this and talked to, I'm not gonna say my friend, but uh, a geneticist named Travis Weinman who keeps a lot of snakes and knows quite a bit about snake genetics. Um, they kind of came to the same conclusion that, um, and I know she's not, but she's just out and she's being really, really helpful today. So we're just gonna talk with her. Um, it turns out that Sharp and the BWC are allelic. So, or at least that's the conclusion that they came to. So what that means is that the Sharp line does in fact have some sort of tyrosinase present in them, but their limiting factor is very, very high. So that's how you get what appears to be almost a T-negative animal, but still occupies that same Leal on the DNA strand as the BWC, that caramel colored snake. So really what that means is that most likely call is the only truly T negative albino boa constrictor and that sharp is in fact a T positive boa, but it just has very, very small amounts of tyrosinase present in it, which is super, super crazy. Um, hopefully I'm, 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 this is the conclusion that, you know, that appears that basically Bo's got to, as well as, uh, after speaking with Travis, who, you know, is an actual scientist, not the hobby science that we all like to pretend that we're experts about, you know, we're, we're pretty good at keeping snakes and we're good at reproducing them, but you know, they can't tell us everything and we're not geneticists. So I'll tend to take his word over a lot of other people's like on Facebook. We mostly stuff. have been talking about snakes that lighten the animal between hypo and all the different types of albino, but here is something that's literally the exact opposite. This is alpha. Alpha is an IMG het T pod CAT positive boa. So IMG stands for increasing melanin gene. And so what that means is that as he gets older with every shed, he gets darker and darker and darker. So when he was born, he looked kind of like a regular boa and yeah he has a little bit of he kind of tracked through the dust because he was struggling when i pulled him out earlier that's what that little spot is there but when he was born he was just kind of like a regular looking snake that just had a lot of black freckling um and he actually came from a litter that had motley in it and his brother was a motley and he was already pretty dark to begin with but because the female that we had is a motley as well. We didn't want the motley because we don't want to breed a super motley as you know, you learn that's a death gene and it's a solid black snake, but it's going to end up dying. But he's IMG. He's pretty black. There's not a whole lot of IMGs out there that are this small that are this dark. Um, he's about four and a half years old now. And you would think that he would be a lot bigger, but we slow grow our boas, especially our CAs and the motleys. So, I mean, I just, I, I love pulling him out. He used to be really feisty when he was little. And so he's just calmed down so much as he's gotten older and bigger. And so I just sometimes when he's out and about, I'm just always in awe of him because it's taking me so long to just get good pictures and have him out handleable because, you know, he's just not always the most cooperative snake and I don't, I'm not going to force him to do anything. So I'm just always super excited when he can do this, but 
you can even see on his belly, it goes all the way through. It's just solid jet black, and looks so great. We're him. hoping, because he is het for CAT positive, we're going to pair him with his little girlfriend, which is a visual CAT positive Motley. Um, honestly, considering how black he got, and he actually has now gotten darker than his brother, because um, the person who got him does post often, I'm mildly concerned that he is, in fact, a Motley. But I don't think he is because Motley has generally like it ends up getting this like full tail stripe, but it does kind of worry me sometimes. But we're hoping to get this kind of dark purpley Motley snake because Motley kind of darkens things up and gives it a bit of like a purpley maroonish hue, as well as the IMG is going to darken it. Period. Plus the CA is a darker form of tyrosine positive albino, and. Sorry, hopefully the camera picks it up. You can see that there is so much iridescence in him. Like, you know, we've all seen the pictures online of like the rainbow boas or the white lips that are like those rainbow snakes, which for whatever reason, people always go, you need to go get this snake. Now they want the snake, which is probably a good thing because white lips a lot of times come in uh, wild caught imports, but you need to get this snake because it's so pretty. But he has quite a bit of just iridescence on his own, and I just love him to death. Hope you guys like this video today. Um, I am absolutely in love with my bows so, so much, and so I have a tendency to be super long-winded about them. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along with this, and I didn't get too technical or long-winded about anything. If you do have any questions, you know, feel free to message me, leave a question down in the comments, and hopefully I can answer them for you. Um, you know, like and subscribe if you can. I hope that, you know, not only are these videos informative, but I know it's kind of hard to tell because I'm just straight faced all the time. Um, but you, you can see how passionate I am for these animals and how cool they are. And you can see just kind of how cool snakes are and reptiles in general. But I always just have a big soft spot for the snakies. And, you know, that you can, you can see how great they are and how wonderful they are and how you know, they really are misjudged and misunderstood so much, and they're just the best, you know. Gotta love them. Hope you guys liked it. Please like and subscribe, and I will check you next time. Have a great day, Internet.